Welcome back to the shop and to the channel. In this week's episode, we're trying to finish up these machine skates. In the last episode, we got most of the machining completed, but there's still a little bit more that I have to do. But we'll tackle that right away before we start getting all of this assembled. I've got these pieces of flat bar that are about the same size as the machine skates that I want to make some, I'm calling them pivot plates out of. Essentially they'll sit on top of the skate and it'll be allowed to pivot so if the machine that's sitting on it or whatever it is I have sitting on the skate, if I need to adjust the direction the skate is going it shouldn't want to slide out from underneath the machine well at least that's the hope and to make these a little bit easier to manufacture I'm going to drill a half inch hole right in the middle of each of them I'm going to weld a piece of half inch round bar into this hole. That will be the pivot pin, but I need to clean off all of the mill scale first. So I'm just using my angle die grinder with a scotch bright pad on it to get the majority of the, the mill scale off so it doesn't contaminate the weld. Well, I'm going to use the skate body as a jig here. I'm going to put just a nut on the table as a spacer and then place the skate body over top of it. When I drop the pin down in the hole it'll keep it up off of the table giving me a little bit of clearance underneath the skate. Well it's a bit of a tight fit but we'll get this plate then sat down on top of the pin and I just need to fill in that little area with weld. Mm -hmm. I'm using my Prime Weld TIG 225 welder here. Uh, I think I have this about 160 amps. So we'll tack it in place first and then we'll try to fill in as much as that cavity with the weld just to, just to make sure it's, it's not going to go anywhere even with a couple of tacks, but it never hurts. just use my die grinder again to go ahead and smooth off the top of the weld with a little mini flat wheel and we'll set this one aside and do the same to the other two. I'm going to use the TIG welder again here to weld the axles into the bodies. First thing I want to do though is clean them up with some acetone just to clean any residue or dirt off of the socket, the side of the skate, or the axle itself. Well there's a number of places where I screwed up machining this stuff and some of these axles fit in real nice like this one but there are others that are not quite a hot dog in a hallway but they could have certainly been machined with a little better tolerance well it looks like it's pretty square in that bore so maybe I did something right 
we'll start here by tacking it on each of the sides just to make sure that it doesn't shift as I start to weld. When you start welding on material, it will expand from the heat and even some small expansion from the heat can cause even a tight tolerance to fit to move. Grabbed a block of scrap from the shelf here to prop my hand up on it. One of the things I was taught in welding school were the ABCs of welding, which is always be comfortable. And that's a little harder to do than you might think. I've got the welder up to its maximum 225 amps. I am going to use pulse, about one pulse per second, uh, just to kind of give me a little bit better control over this. If I wasn't using pulse, it'd be a little bit more difficult, I think, for me as a non-professional welder to get a decent looking weld. I'm going to have to do this in stages since I can't really go the entire diameter in one shot. So we'll do a little bit, we'll readjust, and we'll weld a little bit more until we get all the way around. Well, not the greatest looking welds in the world. I don't know if they're Instagram ready, but they're good enough. Not the worst either. Well, that's the first out of 12. 11 more to do. Well, before I go ahead and complete all of these axle welds, I'm going to go ahead and tack in the other three on this skate body and take it for a little bit of a test drive just to make sure everything's lining up right. That first weld cool and the tacks cool down. I'm going to go ahead and take and slide on the bearings on each of these axles just to see how it rides and whether or not I did at least a reasonable job of machining these axles and the sockets for them straight.
Well, it's not as perfectly flat as I would have liked them to be, but they're close enough. And as long as it's on three of them, I think we'll do okay. The clearance is really shallow underneath, which is what I expected and which is what I wanted. So we can go ahead and take off these bearings. We'll go ahead and weld up the rest of these axles on this and then move on to the other skate bodies. I have this little tungsten grinding attachment that I put on the end of a rotary tool. It's just got a diamond wheel on it and some holes that set the tungsten at the right angle so that you get a decent uh, point on it. It works pretty good, although I probably shouldn't be breathing in that dust.
Well, I have all of the axles now welded to the skate bodies and they're cooled down now. So the next thing is to weld on these handles. These handles will not only be used for carrying them around, but also for steering the skates once they're underneath a machine. I'm going to try a little trick I've seen on other YouTube channels to weld these on. Maybe it'll work. It might go a little faster. That worked out great. I should do that every time, but if I did, I'd have less YouTube content. With all of the welding complete, I can now install the bearings on each axle. I'll put two on each axle. Most of these are a pretty tight fit, but just to make sure that they never come off, I'm going to use a little blue Loctite on a screw with a big washer into the end of the axle. And that should ensure that they never come off. At least not unless I want them to. Some of these axles were machined a little bit looser than I would have liked. So I'm just going to use some Loctite retaining compound on them before putting the bearings on. This will at least help keep the bearing on the axle um, from spinning, which could eventually, I guess over many, many years, end up wearing out the axle. Probably completely unnecessary step, but I guess I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, there's one complete. I'll assemble the other two off camera. Well, we actually have a little bit more machining to do. I've got this small piece of heavy wall pipe that I'm going to use for my steering handle. This will go over those bars that we welded to the front of the skate and give me a way of nudging them to steer them. It's a little bit too long, so we'll just use the cutoff tool to take about three-eighths of an inch off of the end. Well, I need to cut a slot in this pipe so it goes over the rod in the handle. So we'll just chuck it up into the vise of the bridge port and mill out a slot in one side. And instead of using uh, cutting oil, I've started using this anchor lube a little bit more often. I've used it for as a tapping lubricant for quite a while, but I've seen that it can be used as an effective um, cutting coolant lubricant. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a give it a shot. It doesn't smoke nearly as much as the oil does, so it actually makes for a little bit better of a YouTube video.
the next thing I want to do here is to mill a little bit of a flat spot where I can weld on a piece of 5 8 inch rod. This will just make it a little bit easier to weld it up if it's flat rather than having to either cope the rod or end up with a lot of gap. I'm going to take some pieces now. I've already cleaned up the area where I'm going to weld here for the handle, the steering handle, I guess I'll call it. And we'll clamp it to my uh, welding table. I really like this CertiFlat welding table. It gives me lots of options to be able to fixture something in place with some level of precision. I'm not utilizing all those features here now. I'm just lining up it's just a steering handle for a quick and dirty tool I have the feeling this material is some kind of drill rod because it wasn't able to cut it on bandsaw I ended up having to use a zip wheel to cut this piece so I'm not exactly sure what the material is so just to be a little bit on the safe side I'm using some 309 L welding rod which generally you would use for stainless but it's really good for welding materials together that you might not know what the alloy is Well, now I can weld the piece of pipe that I cut the notch end to the other end of this steering handle. I'll put a couple of quick tacks on here and then use that same 309 welding rod to weld this up. Well, off camera, I cut some piece of treadmill mat that I had left over from a treadmill I disassembled and I glued them to the top of the swivel plate.
So these just ride on the top of the skate body. I thought about putting like a thrust washer in here, but I suppose I could revisit that later. But I think when I go to use these, I'll just put a little bit of oil on the top of the skate, and that should allow for the swivel plate to do what it was designed to do. Well, they roll really nicely. I'm happy with how they came out. I'm hoping that the clearance that I left underneath it isn't too shallow. You can get an idea how this steering handle would work if this thing was underneath the machine and all the weight was on it. I can use this handle to pivot the skate. The machine should stay where it's at and the pivot plate should keep it from wanting to slide out from underneath it. Although I do think I put this notch in the wrong spot. I should have put it 90 degrees to the handle rather than where I have it offset. This might prove to be a problem later, but I guess I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. We are going to call this project complete for now. I will be putting these to use soon, but that'll have to wait for another video. I hope you enjoyed this process. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps with the YouTube analytics. It lets YouTube know that there might be other people that would enjoy watching it. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think and how well you predict that these things will work. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.